Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope we're all having a wonderful start to the week and Merry Christmas out there. Hopefully we all get some time to spend uh, some, you know, quality time with some family and friends out there and really celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, now in today's video, I do have an update for you on that ongoing Christmas blizzard out there as well as this ongoing pattern change that we are continuing to forecast uh, throughout this week really and into the new year. And I think the real cherry on top for a lot of folks in today's video is the increasing likelihood of some snow for some of our friends relatively far south, uh, dare I say even parts of northern Alabama and Georgia as soon as the next couple of days. So I'm going to break all that down for you in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. We are trying to get to 5,000 here. Uh, it's kind of our next milestone we're working on. And make sure also to like the video, share it with somebody that you think might find it interesting, and comment, let me know where you're watching from and if you have any kind of exciting Christmas plans out there. And also, if you're uh, in any of these areas being impacted by some big-time weather, uh, let me know. Me personally, I am actually in one of those areas right now where we could see some flooding today, and I'll mention that as well in the video. Uh, with that said, though, let's go ahead and jump on into your forecast here. Now, taking a look at the uh, central part of the country, uh, you'll notice on our um, kind of, uh, not water vapor loop, but our uh, infrared satellite, there we go, sorry, it's early in the morning, um, we do have a big area of some disturbed weather here through much of the northern Great Plains. That's where we're seeing some of those blizzard conditions, but also uh, you'll notice down here in the Gulf, a lot of moisture being streamed northward as the strong southerly flow is continuing uh, to bring some pretty big time rain for a lot of folks. Uh, and uh, looking at our radar imagery, again, there's a lot going on for our Christmas morning. I'm going to start with kind of the small stuff, then take a look at the big stuff. Uh, so kind of zooming in on the east a little bit here, we do have a couple things to watch out for. Uh, kind of right here along the uh, foothills of the Carolinas from Oconee County, South Carolina, kind of up through uh, Brevard, Hendersonville, Pickens County, South Carolina, up through Caesars Head, uh, Gaffney, Chesney, some of these other communities, even Forest City, North Carolina. If you couldn't tell, I kind of live in this area, uh, naming all these small town names many of you have never heard of. Uh, but we do have a uh, flooding risk today as a lot of this moisture streams northward, and uh, some of that really could cause some flooding issues here. So we do have that to worry about. Now, the bigger thing, though, that we do need to talk about is these blizzard conditions, and we've got a lot of warnings up. Uh, all of these kind of orange boxes on your map from much of South Dakota through Nebraska and a big chunk of um, kind of northeastern Colorado here are going to see blizzard conditions throughout the day today and even going into overnight tonight and even into parts of tomorrow. Uh, so a lot of kind of very active uh, weather areas ongoing, and if you're in between these watches and warnings, uh, don't let your guard down because it's still going to be a very rainy Christmas for a lot of folks before uh, that change over to some colder weather takes over later on into this week. Now starting off with uh, some of that flooding risk that we do need to watch out for, we do have a slight risk of uh, excessive rainfall today, again right here from the escarpment from just kind of northwest of, or excuse me, northeast of the Atlanta suburbs up towards Toccoa, uh, up through Anderson, South Carolina, Greenville, Spartanburg, and then right up the Appalachia chain, kind of up there into Hendersonville, uh, Buncombe County, even near Asheville. Uh, again, could see some excessive rainfall in these areas, so definitely need to watch out for that. Um, throughout today, and even really into overnight tonight and the start of tomorrow as well, could see a lot of rain in some of these areas. Alrighty, let's time out kind of the next um, couple of days for you, and then we'll take a look at some snowfall and rainfall totals, and then break down um, that potential for, um, you know, that pattern change. Alrighty, so um, waking up this morning and uh, kind of throughout this afternoon, it's going to look very similar throughout the day today. Again, near blizzard conditions, if not just flat out blizzard conditions for much of Nebraska and South Dakota, uh, while we're seeing kind of just some good old fashioned cold rain for other folks from Iowa. Uh, down through much of Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, getting in on some of that rain as well. Um, so again, a lot of people getting active weather, uh, whether it's kind of uh, on the more severe side or not. Uh, now, one thing I do think we need to watch out for today is this kind of sliver of ice showing up on our model. So that could cause some pretty big time problems, especially with those winds whipping out there. We could have some real travel impacts there, uh, kind of in a skinny corridor of extreme western Minnesota and uh, kind of extreme northwestern Iowa there throughout much of this afternoon. And again, as this is ongoing, watch for some flooding down here in the southeast in those higher terrains and right in the foothills of the escarpment as again, this big plume of moisture continues streaming northward. 
Now, getting later on into this afternoon and even into this evening, by about the time the sun is going down, this shield of snow continues off into the Great Plains and continuing to shift just a tad further off to the east there throughout the day. As that's ongoing, still dealing with these showers and kind of light to moderate rain through much of the Ohio River Valley and pushing up into the Great Lakes, and also still dealing with uh, rain, even moderate to heavy at times here into the southeast. Uh, as again, we've got a little bit more lift there and uh, a bit of a closer source there to the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Now overnight tonight, that rain is going to continue again, especially in the southeast and mid-Atlantic where we have that flooding threat. And by the time we're waking up tomorrow, still dealing with some widespread snow. Um, I will mention though, I think at this point, by the time we're getting into our Tuesday, the snow will be a little lighter and the winds will begin to slowly calm down there uh, through much of the Great Plains, but also um, that kind of shield of precipitation expanding. So I think more folks could get in on that snow going into tomorrow morning. Uh, now, if you're watching kind of in the Ohio River Valley, kind of here into the Mid-South, I think we're clearing out a little bit by tomorrow morning uh, before things once again change here going later on into the week. And that's when those snow chances uh, kind of become on the rise um, through much of those regions. Now, getting into our Tuesday afternoon, I mean, it is still raining down here in the sections of the Carolinas, Virginia, and up into the Northeast. Again, this is where I'm most concerned for those flooding risks, especially kind of in the Western Carolinas, where we've got uh, some topography that's really going to help us out uh, in terms of increasing rainfall totals. So really need to watch out in those areas. Uh, but, you know, for everyone else on a Tuesday afternoon, rain is much more scattered. Uh, even in the Northeast, it's going to rain, but it's going to be in a much more scattered nature than we're seeing in the Southeast. Uh, and also by the time we're getting into our Tuesday afternoon, you'll notice we are clearing out a bit up in the kind of Midwest as well uh, with, um, you know, some drier air kind of working on through. Now, by the time we get to our Tuesday afternoon, you'll notice again, uh, this low pressure here is now occluding the storm system. And what I mean by that is where we kind of at the beginning had very pronounced uh, warm front here, uh, bringing that warm air and then the cold air on the backside. As this um, storm system continues to progress, this cold line is going to continue to push further and fo uh, further kind of up and overtaking uh, that warm front, just meaning that the storm itself is now going to be surrounded by all cold air instead of having kind of well-defined fronts. And as that happens, it is going to then work off to the east and bring all of that cold air that's surrounding it uh, to the eastern half of the country. And that is going to lead over to the start of that pattern change to start out 2024. Uh, now, also, this is Wednesday morning on your map, and uh, we're getting kind of to the end of the map here, but uh, very rainy scene still through much of the Mid-Atlantic and up into the Northeast at this point, and also still relatively warm. But now look at these widespread snow showers breaking out even into sections of the Midwest, still ongoing in the Great Plains, and this big shield of cold air and um, snow showers is going to slowly but surely lift off or even dive down, I guess I should say, towards the south and east going through this Wednesday. And again, this is as far out as this map goes, but Wednesday afternoon, look at some of these snow showers now getting kind of far south uh, into sections of southern Missouri, portions of maybe Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, can't rule it out, uh, while unfortunately we're still dealing with a lot of rain up into the northeast and mid-Atlantic. But don't worry, that uh, cold air is on the way. Alrighty, uh, now taking a quick look at some of these snowfall totals. Again, this is a lot of snow that's going to come, and this uh, these totals I'm showing you are straight from the National Weather Service, so I didn't make this one up. Um, a lot of folks are going to see more than a foot of snow here, kind of right in the heart of South Dakota and Nebraska over the next 48 hours or so, uh, with kind of surrounding areas, you know, getting lesser and lesser totals the further you go out from this bullseye on your map. But if you're living in central Nebraska or South Dakota, a lot of snow on the way. Uh, and you probably already have a lot accumulated out there. And definitely, if you're watching this part of the country, let me know what you're seeing out there. I'd love to get those reports. Uh, now, kind of moving this south a little bit, we are going to see snow in areas further south here through sections of Kansas, specifically northern Kansas and uh, definitely northwestern Kansas, where we could see a couple inches of snow. Uh, and again, this is just over the next 48 hours. I think as we go further out into time, uh, some of these snow showers could kind of even get into some of these areas further off towards the south and east. Uh, but either way, uh, now through about Wednesday morning, a lot of snow and a lot of wind and very uh, blizzardy conditions for a lot of folks here. All right, now uh, let's kind of zoom this storm out a little bit more and can, uh, or kind of pick up where we left off on Wednesday afternoon. 
Uh, again, Wednesday afternoon, we've got a shield of rain with kind of a secondary low pressure system uh, moving up the east coast and bringing some rain there. But here on the back side, here is our upper level low or kind of cutoff low at this point uh, with this kind of eye looking shape here with all of these blue lines that is going to then slowly uh, work off towards the south and east. And as it does, by the time we're getting into our Thursday morning uh, and our Thursday afternoon, look at these snow showers breaking out through much of the Ohio River Valley and beginning to get relatively far south. Now, temperatures at the surface are probably going to be above freezing by a good bit here, uh, but we've got a, a lot of cold air aloft or just uh, very cold air not too high above our heads. And that is going to be conducive enough for a lot of this to fall as some snow showers during the overnight of Thursday afternoon in areas pretty far south. Latest GFS model bringing snow showers through much of Middle Tennessee, even sections of the northern Alabama. I think Huntsville, uh, Dalton, Georgia cannot roll out some flakes flying overnight Thursday. Uh, now again, temperatures at the surface, it's going to take time for it to cool down. So I don't expect really any impacts here, maybe some accumulations uh, on the grassy surfaces and higher, you know, elevated surfaces. Um, but nonetheless, I think snowflakes will fly here in sections of the Mid-South this uh, Thursday, overnight into that Thursday. By the time we're waking up that Friday, look at these snow showers sneaking into northern Georgia, uh, potentially the higher terrains definitely of western North Carolina and West Virginia, uh, likely to see some of these snow showers as well uh, early Friday and throughout the day Friday. Now, as we move this further ahead into Friday afternoon, then this precipitation kind of dies off a little bit, but uh, could see some sprinkles. Again, maybe even some flurries here into the Carolinas uh, come overnight Friday and into our early Saturday before that storm system kind of clears out. Now, how much snow are we talking? Well, again, this isn't going to be a blockbuster event by any means, but our latest uh, ensemble members from our GFS, again, the uh, highest amount of snow we're going to see is easily going to be in the higher terrains of West Virginia and North Carolina, where we could get a couple of inches. Uh, but for you folks kind of watching maybe in the Cumberland Plateau here, I think a dusting to an inch, pretty likely. Uh, and if you're watching kind of in, uh, you know, areas of Northern Alabama, Northern Georgia, and kind of up here into the Ohio River Valley, uh, I think you could also see some flakes, uh, just likely more of a novelty event than really any impacts. But I mean, uh, these storm systems are tough to forecast, so I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody maybe eke out a quick inch where maybe it's not uh, so expected. Another place that is likely to see some snow, I think here is into Missouri as the storm system is pulling away from uh, kind of Nebraska and the Northern Great Plains could bring some snow there for you folks. Uh, as for our Euro Ensemble members, again, uh, kind of painting this picture over Missouri where we could see uh, a quick dusting to an inch of snow off of some of that uh, back end snow within um, really about around Wednesday. Uh, as for the Ohio River Valley, again, scattered snow showers possible here. Um, just likely not accumulating to a whole lot where I do think we will see more accumulation again like this model shows uh, much like our last one is in the higher elevations of North Carolina, Virginia and West Virginia where a quick couple inches could accumulate and then also up into the northeast as well uh, could see some back end snow showers particularly lake effect snow out of this. Alrighty now taking a quick look at the uh, kind of overall pattern change that we've been discussing. Again, this is our Christmas storm where we see blue on this map just kind of indicating that cool and stormy weather. Uh, that kind of slowly but surely works off towards the south and east over the next couple of days, bringing with it some of that snow um, before eventually that storm pulls away. But this will not be the end of this cooler, snowier pattern. Uh, after that, these blue colors hang around for a while. We'll likely get another trough or just another area of cool and stormy weather to swing on through the first couple of days of January. And then our models have been hinting at maybe uh, in the long range, we could get a split in the polar vortex. And that could potentially send a shot of very cold air south out of the Arctic into some part of the United States. Now, um, that's still probably about 10 days away before that would occur. Uh, but our latest ensemble members are indicating that. And they're also indicating still a very southern or active southern jet stream here. So... Um, I think going into January, we've got a very good pattern for snow. If you don't see it within the next week, don't lose hope because uh, that first week of January and likely even after that uh, looks quite uh, quite good. I mean, just looking at this, very cold air being supplied out of um, Canada and a very active southern storm track is a beautiful setup for some snow throughout the eastern half of the country. Uh, in fact, easily the best we've seen this winter and probably even the best we've seen out of the past couple winters. 
All right, temperature-wise, I know it's been a warm Christmas. Uh, that's going to continue through the next couple of days. But again, as this storm system occludes, as I mentioned earlier, and moves off towards the south and east, look at these blue colors taking over. Uh, with cooler temperatures going into our new year, especially for areas of the southern part of the country and through the southeast. Uh, now, as we go further ahead into time, that blue is going to become much more prevalent uh, kind of nationwide, I think going kind of towards the end of that first week of January and into that second week, much more widespread, colder uh, than average temperatures. And again, with that active southern jet stream, uh, could very easily lead to some sort of snowfall or wintry event is uh, I think becoming more and more likely the closer we get to this um, kind of start of January. Alrighty, with all that said, um, again, we talked about a lot, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and a very Merry Christmas as well, and uh, if you don't celebrate Christmas, then uh, happy holidays, and uh, if you don't celebrate any holidays, well, then I just hope you have a wonderful day. Um, with all that said, though, again, hope you have a great rest of your Christmas day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.